Hi, sixth grade. These notes will cover the first half of the what's it matter notes. Um, so going over mass and volume in particular. We'll leave density for a different video. So matter um, really relates to any physical substance. Um, any physical substance. So that's pretty broad, um, but it should be because really matter is anything that you can touch or feel. So that's anything in the world. Um, it is also often referred to as anything with mass. Now we haven't yet defined mass, so that's kind of circular to talk about it like that, but what we're coming back to again and again is this is anything and everything has mass and is matter therefore. Um, anything and everything. is matter. So when you're talking about a car going down the street, the pencil in your hand, yourself, right, the human body, those are all types of or collections of matter, right? You yourself are made up of skin and bones and blood and all that kind of stuff. So that is a collection of different types of matter. Your pencil is made up of wood, which is made up of carbon molecules, hydrogen molecules, um, probably a little bit of oxygen in there and some other random stuff. So those are all different types of matter that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but matter is just anything physical. Um, so technically, even air has matter, right? If you s sit in front of a fan, you can feel the air hit your face. The reason you can feel the air hit your face is because those air molecules are actually little tiny molecules of matter. They're oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, all different types of molecules that the reason you feel them is because they're hitting you in the face, right? Not in a violent way though. Um, so mass, to define that a little bit more carefully, is the measure, the measure of how much matter is in an object. So essentially it means like how much stuff is in an object. Um, usually it has something to do with volume, right? Bigger things usually have more stuff in it, right? Like a tree compared to a branch. The tree obviously has more mass, it's heavier. It has more molecules packed into it. Um, but we wanna stay away from just assuming that bigger, right, and a larger volume does not always equal heavier, right? So bigger would be more volume and heavier would be more mass. So what I'm showing in that little picture there is that not in every single case is a bigger thing heavier, right? We'll talk more about that later, but think about a beach ball, right? That's bigger than a soccer ball, but that's because it's just full of more air. The soccer ball might actually weigh more or have more mass. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more later when we get down to density. But so to talk more about mass, the measure of how much matter is in an object. When we're thinking of matter and we're thinking of any object, we need to think about the little tiny molecules that make it up. So essentially mass is like a count of how many little molecules there are in it. Now you're never going to sit and measure the mass of a uh, pencil by counting the number of molecules in it. Instead, you're going to use a scale. Right, um, we'll just put that right here. We'll say use a scale, and a scale could be a triple beam balance, one that you know has the weights on it, like we're using in class, or it could be an electronic scale where you put it on it, you you put the object on the scale, or you stand on the scale yourself, and it tells you the mass. Um, so you're not you're never going to count the amount of matter. Um, instead, we use different units to describe how much matter is in an object. So we're going to use the um, metric system forever in science class. Uh, so that would be, the base would be grams, right? So that could be kilograms, that could be milligrams, and there's all different prefixes that can go with that, but grams are the basic unit of measure for mass. So you would say, you know, if an object has 20 grams of mass, another object that has 50 grams of mass is heavier, therefore has more mass, means there is more matter in that object. Remember that it doesn't say anything about its size. 
just because it's heavier doesn't necessarily mean that an object is bigger. Um, so to answer this question right here, what has mass? Everything, right? Which goes back to our conversation about air, right? Even the air molecules that are hitting you coming out of the fan, those have mass. Light is made up of photons, right? Photons of light. Even those photons have a tiny, 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 tiny bit of mass. And that's because everything's made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, which all have mass. Those might be words that you've heard of before. Don't worry about them right now. I'm just kind of throwing them out there um, for you science nerds like me that want to understand a little bit more of the details. So we're not going to get to density right now, so we're going to kind of like cut that out for this moment. Um, you don't need to write that there. I'm just making it a little bit more obvious what we're covering in this video. So volume is the measure of how much space matter takes up. I'm going to write that down. Measure of how much space matter takes up. I'm going to just kind of put this in its own box because it's something very important we need to remember. Um, the basic units for that are going to be a liter. Now we can go down to milliliters, or we can go up to um, kiloliters, right? You can get bigger or smaller from there. Um, but essentially, with volume, is we're saying how big is it, right? And we're talking about a three-dimensional space here. We're not just talking about length and width. We're talking about length times width times height, right? Three dimensions. One, two, three. So if, for instance, I drew a cube, there's my cube already drawn out because it usually takes me three or four tries. Um, we know that I could find the volume of it by taking the length times the width times the height, right? Multiplying those three dimensions together would give me the volume. But what if I had some object that was kind of randomly shaped, right? Either oval or it was just a rock, right? A rock that doesn't have six sides. It's not a cube. How would I find out the volume of, excuse me, that rock? Well, if it's an irregularly shaped object, what I would do is something called the displacement method. Displacement method. So you read about this in that first reading that we did, which is essentially, and you can ignore these images over here for the time being, where you have a known volume of water. So here's my cylinder of water, and let's say it's at 50 ml. And when I take my oddly shaped object and I plunk it into my water, the water level rises up to 100 milliliters. So the water level changed 50 milliliters because I added the rock in. Since the rock is the only thing that I added in, we know that that change in volume is due only to the rock. So we can figure out what the volume is by taking the new volume of the water minus the old volume of the water, and you probably already did this in your head, and the volume of that rock would be 50 milliliters. Now, doing the displacement method, and we call it that because this rock displaced or moved the water to a new place, right? So we call it the displacement method. Doing that method doesn't actually tell you the dimensions, right? I still don't know the length, width, and height of this rock, right? Which is impossible to actually calculate because it's an irregularly shaped object. It's weird. Since it's so weird, we have to use a different method, and that method is the displacement method. So now just at the bottom of your page, right, I'm just scrolling down a little bit and getting some blank space, we're going to just talk for a second about units, okay? Um, so units, we're always going to use the metric system. Um, we're not going to use the confusing American system because for whatever reason, the Americans invented this system where there's a foot. And within a foot, there's 12 inches. But inside of an inch, you measure it in sixteenths. Now remember, once you have 16 sixteenths, you get an inch, 12 of those make a foot, and 3 of those make a yard. 5,280 of those make a mile. None of these numbers make any kind of sense. The metric system, though, is based off of 10, right? It's just based off of a system that makes sense. So when we're talking about length, we're going to be talking about meters. 
when we're talking about mass, we're going to be talking about grams. And when we're talking about volume, we're going to be talking about liters. Now, which each, with each of these base units here, you can make them bigger or smaller. So for instance, we're starting with the meter as the base. We can get way bigger and talk about the kilo meter. That means a thousand meters. So this means a thousand. Three zeros there. We could also talk about the lesser known hectometer, which is 100. Or we could talk about the also lesser known decameter, which is 10. On the other side of this, we could talk about the millimeter, which is 1 over a thousand, right? So that's a thousandth of a meter, meaning there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. There's the cent e meter, which means that there are a hundred of those in one meter. And then there's the deci meter, which means that there are ten of those in a meter. So the ones that we should really know are the meter, the kilo, the centi, and the milli, right? So a milligram, a milliliter, a centimeter, centigram, centiliter. Instead of meter, it could be gram or liter. And a kilometer, kilogram, kiloliter. Those are the ones that we should know. So obviously with meter, it could be gram or it could be liter right here. That's the base unit is what this is, right? That's where we start off. So just wanted to point those out so that you know that we can get bigger or smaller from the meter. And what's wonderful is they all operate by 10. See how a deca is 10 meters? 10 times bigger than that would be 100. 10 times bigger than that would be 1,000. We can also go down by 10, go down by another factor of 10 to 100, and another factor of 10 to 1,000. All right, that should be 1 over and 1 over, okay? Um, so this just briefly covered mass and volume, kind of what is matter, which is just anything physical that you can touch or feel. Everything has matter, therefore everything has mass. Or sorry, everything is matter, therefore everything has mass. Um, and then just kind of a brief uh, talk about units and how we're going to use the metric system. And then some of the prefixes that go along with that metric system. Please let me know if you've got any questions.